Hello, let's see, we're just waiting on Freeland. There we are. All right. Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to Netflix's Lock and Key Roundtable. We're going to go ahead and get started with Meredith and Carlton. Uh, once the session starts, I'll be calling on each of you individually. Please remember to limit to one question at a time and remain muted until it is your turn. And I will turn my camera off and call on the first journalist as soon as I get the confirmation we're rolling. Here we go. All right, let's get started with Let's have down and nerdy. Meredith Carlton, how are you guys doing today? Good, James. How are you? I like the name of your podcast. We love puns, so down and nerdy is pretty good. Thank you. It's one of my specialties. <laughs> Appreciate it. So uh, we actually get to see some new keys this season that are introduced for the first time. How much can you tell us? I know you can't tell us a whole lot, but how much of a game changer are some of these keys going to be for this season? Oh, hugely. Hugely. Um, I mean, yeah, we can't, you know, spoil obviously um, some of the keys to come, but they completely, uh, you know, change the fabric of the show and the rules of the show. So everything changes because of these keys. Yeah, I mean, the keys are central to the storytelling of the show. It's one of the things that um, we love about the show is that we get to explore all these new keys and the keys have uh, costs and consequences and um, you know what what you see may not be what you get and that's just so central to the storytelling that Meredith and I are trying to do and so obviously the keys are a huge part of what happens this season. Excellent thank you both. All right, freelance Clownfish TV. Hello. Uh, what can you tell me about how how things are kept uh, new and interesting for this season? What was that process to to improve upon the first season? I think every you know you're always when you're going into a new season, you're always trying to outdo yourself. Um, and I think what was great about this season is we were coming off of this huge cliffhanger uh, for the audience that that Gabe is Dodge and has been the whole time. Um, and so, you know, for us, it was about, you know, really just turning up the dial in every way this season, just heightening everything, just the family drama, the, the stakes, our villains, the romances, everything is kind of just so much more heightened. And we really kind of leaned into wanting to make the show feel more mature just as our characters are maturing um, and lean into more of the darker aspects of the show. Thank you right, very James. much. All right, again, this one is for the both of you. We get to learn a lot more about Duncan this season. What was it like to kind of expand on his character a bit and give him a much more important arc this season? Wow. Well, I mean, Aaron Ashmore is one of our favorite characters and we didn't feel like we had time in season one to do everything that we wanted to with that character. And uh, there's also a lot of rich mythology for the Duncan character in the comic book. And then I would say that it was even enhanced in the way we were telling our story. So that was one of the things that we were most excited about in season two was getting to really play out his character and have the audience really understand a lot more about you know, where he came from, what he's been dealing with, and then um, kind of see him change in ways that becomes really fundamental to the storytelling and the way the story unfolds. And it's a great arc too, thank you. I'm oh, glad, glad that you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's definitely one of the more kind of, I think, emotional and surprising stories of the season. So we're proud of it. Mike? Uh, if possible, without going into too much spoiler territory or any at all, uh, when you're when you're adapting from a comic book, what during this season do you choose to keep and what do you choose to set aside for maybe further seasons? Oh, gosh. I mean, I don't think that we really think about it. Um, we, it's not like we just sort of sort all the scenes and then put them in piles or anything like that. We've, we've, we've read the comics. 
they kind of inform our, um, you know, just our thinking. And then we're just trying to tell our story organically. And as we, I'm sorry, as we tell our story organically, we, you know, we use certain things in the comic books and it's like, we don't, it's really more just like, well, where does this fit to do this? This, this is something that we, the comic books are just so much a part of our sort of baseline of knowledge. And um, I don't know, it just, it just, it's, it's, it's a very intuitive process between us and the writers in the writer's room, how we actually choose to use that stuff or not use that stuff. Thank you. James. Thank you again for both for the both of you. We saw obviously Dodge is a big part of last season, going to be a big part of this season as well. But last season it was more Laysla as Dodge. This season we get to see more Griffin as Dodge. So talk about that transition between the two of them from season one into season two and how that changed things a little bit. Well, it's great to kind of mix up the energy of your villains always, you know, when a show has to continue with the same villain for seasons and seasons and seasons, there's always the, you know, worry that it's going to feel a bit stale. So, you know, Lysla De La Vera playing Dodge in season one, you'll feel a very different energy as Griffin Dunn playing Dodge in season two. And we love Griffin as our Dodge. Um, Partly because we've never really, you've never seen that actor, you know, get to play that kind of a character. And it's surprising because you don't see, you don't look at him and think that kid's scary, but yet there are, I think there are genuine moments within our season where he really does kind of just on a dime, you know, sell really this inc incredible, uh, you know, formidable, he's so formidable. And so uh, it's been really fun for, it was really fun for us to write to he and also his dynamic between he and Eden, which was another kind of, you know, a, a mix, a way to mix it up the season to be able to have our two villains. Uh, but Griffin, we think did a terrific job as Dodge and kind of sold this completely different energy than, than Lysla did. And he was awesome. Thank you. Oh, good. Glad you liked it. Mike? Uh, as far as things that happen throughout season two, is there anything that you feel that fans will have a strong reaction to? One of those topics that'll be talked about for years after the fact? <laughs> I mean, I don't know that anything in season two rises to the fact that people will talk about it for years afterwards. But I mean, the show we feel is really entertaining. We think it's better than season one. I think Lock and Key is a fantastic uh, show to binge when you're you know, you just want to chill out after a long day. And, you know, we feel like our world is really engaging, captivating, draws you in, uh, will entertain you. Uh, we'll explore some cool thematics. We'll give you a nice blend of horror, comedy, uh, romance, drama, you know, uh, fantasy. Um, so I think, I, you know, I, I think that's kind of more, I think in its totality, season two is great. I don't think it's about any one particular moment. I do think, I hope there are some deaths that I hope stay with the audience for a while and, and haunt them. I'll say that. They're still haunting me yeah. though, That's and it's true. been years. That, that, could, that could be. That could be <laughs> James? All right, again, again, we're gonna try to avoid spoilers here, but I, I would say that I loved all the episodes, but for me, episode five is the no turning back episode where if you get there, you're going to binge the whole thing. So you might as well just get comfortable. So I think it's one of the biggest episodes of the season. So without spoiling anything, and I believe Carlton, you directed this episode, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, right. what was it like putting that episode together? And did you kind of know that that was like the epic episode where you're like, well, now we've got them. Well, it was kind of an epic. Ep yeah, I think it was kind of the epic episode, which is part of the reason that I wanted to direct it. Um, uh, you know, Meredith wrote the episode and it's just a fantastic script. And um, so it was a wonderful collaboration uh, between us as we tried to bring it to life. And it just, it felt like this idea of, you know, going inside Eden's head was one of the most delicious things for us to explore in the entire series. And certainly to that point in the series, it was something that was just really incredibly special. Mark Steele, our production designer, you know, really 
took off with the ideas that we presented him and uh i don't know it was just it was it, it is it is a real true pivot point i think you're right i think that's the moment at which um you know everything changes in season two and you know i really feel uh, honored and delighted to direct it and um it was a great script and it was i don't know it's just it was yeah it, re it really is kind of the pivot point in the show and um hopefully the audience will uh will feel the same way awesome thank you all right mike all right uh between the two of you uh which was your favorite episode Oof. five um. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about five and i so i won't just say five uh i will say i really love eight um which is the episode where we get to see uh the revolutionary war um scenes and introduce uh kevin durand's character frederick gideon um, I really loved being able to uh, tell more of that story that's in the comics of this mythology of the origins of the Black Door. Um, I also, you know, really love the way we tell that story, uh, paralleling Benjamin Locke with what Tyler Locke is, is faced with having to do, this idea of the, this responsibility that has fallen on both of their shoulders to create this key. Um, and so I think uh, for me, five and uh, certainly episode eight are two of my favorite episodes. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, James. One of the things I think you guys did really well with this show, especially in the second season, is you don't introduce a ton of new characters. And a lot of shows kind of do that in their second season. And I, I, I think that's to their detriment sometimes. Talk about the characters that you did introduce and was it just as important when you introduce them as the few characters that you did bring in the season? Um, we felt like we had a lot more exploring to do of the characters that we'd already met in season two. So we had, I think season one really sort of sets up the premise of the show and deals with the family and their grief and their dislocation moving to this new place. But we felt in season two, we had a lot of room to explore their relationships. And so we wanted to, you know, we just, we, we felt we set up all these characters and now we really wanted to kind of learn more about them across the season two. So we didn't feel like we needed a whole bunch of new characters. We felt like we just needed the opportunity to dig deeper into a lot of the characters that we had. Obviously, there are some new characters, but I think for us, their main goal was to really deepen the audience's um, connection to the characters that they met in season one. Yeah, we're excited to, you know, introduce Josh, who is a, you know, new a history teacher at Matheson, who has this kind of budding relationship with Nina, um, because we really loved giving that to Nina. You know, she's been long suffering. It's really nice to kind of see her start something, um, but then also have it play on our mystery of actually this guy might be here for ulterior motives and what does that mean? Um, and also we really loved introducing the character of Jamie, um, his daughter, to be able to give Bodhi a friend because we've seen Kinsey and Tyler with their friends it's really nice to be able to see Bodhi with someone his own age who's excited about the keys too. And he gets to kind of discover keys with her. So happy you brought that up because I'm so happy for Bodhi. Thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Mike? Uh, if, if the keys were real and you had the chance to have one in, in real life, which one would you choose? Uh, given the nightmare of air travel these days, anywhere key for sure. Damn it, you took mine. It's funny, I used to always say the head key, but yeah, in COVID, I 100% would say the Anywhere key. James. All right, so you guys do have your moments of humor in the show, even though there are a lot of serious moments. Like last year, we had our aloha moment, if you will. Do you think there's anything in this season that maybe fans are going to latch on to and it's going to maybe, maybe be the new aloha moment for this season? 
Hmm. I don't know if I there's think, any, yeah, go ahead. No, I don't know if there's, I mean, something that rises to the level of a catchphrase like aloha. Obviously we do have some aloha callbacks in the season. Um, I think there's some very funny moments in episode uh, seven uh, where Eden is trapped under the glass. Um, I think that is one of the more sort of laugh it out loud uh, scenes in, in the show, I would say. But we always try to sprinkle humor, you know, and just to have some levity in the show. Certainly with the Savini squad, I think you get a lot of that. Um, but humor is pretty is important to our show to kind of have that balance. I mean, that was exactly what I was going to say. I had to say, <laughs> so, <laughs> Eden, Eden, uh, Eden in totality provides us with a lot of moments that make Meredith and me laugh. So yes, definitely. Thank you, Mike. How difficult is it to balance the the humor with the drama of the series? Is is it a task to do? Um, I don't know if it's a, t a task so much as. You know, it's kind of an opportunity for us to be able to, you know, have some levity in the show, which I do think uh, a show like this, you it does really benefit from. And it is a really important part of the show um, that it not just be dark, that these kids are also, you know, there's a wish fulfillment aspect to these keys and they're having fun with them and they're having fun with their friends with them and the Savini squad is an important part of the show. So, you know, I don't know that it's so much a task as it is we see as kind of an opportunity to, you know, have the show have like a little bit of a lighter tone um, to give you kind of a break from, from the more intense moments. Hey, James. I feel like this season, the splattering kind of takes on a little bit of a life of its own and we get to, you know, just feel a little bit more of the vibe and maybe t even talk sequel about that. It, was it fun to kind of dive into that a little bit more this season as well? And is there ever a chance that fans are actually going to get to see the splattering from start to finish? Um, well, from your lips to Netflix's ears, uh, <laughs> You know, if some if Netflix said, "Hey, Meredith and Carlton, you guys want to do the splattering as a show?" I don't think that we would uh, say no. Um, we we definitely see some of it, and we spend a lot of time talking about the movie. And the trailer is a really really fun thing that uh, um, we were able to put together. I you know, it's just it's it we love the Savini squad and we wanted to sort of feel like what they did led to something tangible. And, um, so, uh, yeah, that was that. And, you know, there's more, more movie making to come from those guys. I'm glad we could put that out there. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Mike, we are going to give you the last question. No pressure. I appreciate it. Uh, so where where does Lock and Key go from here after this season? Where do you think it, it, it can explore in the future? Um, well, you know, season three, which we actually, we finished filming about a month ago. Uh, I, you know, we don't want to say too much about, but I will say it's very focused on, on the family and their, um, very bonded up and they are facing the greatest threat that they have had to face yet. Um, so uh, it, it, it's, it's been a real joy to, to get to continue to tell that story. We were very lucky to be able to, you know, get picked up for seasons two and seasons three back to back and be able to tell that full story. Um, and so I think that, I think that people are gonna be very excited to dive into season three once they've seen all of season two. Perfect, thank you. Great, and so that's going to wrap up our round table with Meredith and Carlton. Um, outlets, we will move you to the next round table as soon as I get the go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Appreciate your interest. Thank you. <laughs>